Hello everyone, my name is Lewis, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all safe and well. Now, before we start the episode, uh, I've got a couple of channel announcements for you. Um, the first of which um, is to wish you all a happy new year. Um, I'm not saying anything extravagant here or something that you didn't observe. 2020 was an absolute shocker. It was garbage. Now, I'm hoping, along with, I'm sure, all of us, that 2021 is going to be less eventful. There is no guarantee of it, but at least we can hope. I know hope isn't really a strategy, but <laughs> um, yeah, one can only hope that uh, 2021 is going to be yeah less eventful. <laughs> um, the second one is... Uh, to thank each and every one of you who have taken the time to stop by the channel to view the videos to like subscribe and share um i don't want you to think for even a you know half a second that it's not appreciated it certainly is it's humbling that um so many of you who have taken the time out of your day to watch a couple of my videos and listen to my rantings. Um, it really is humbling. And um, I will continue to make these videos as long as you're willing to, to watch them. So again, thank you from all my heart. Thank you so much for stopping by the channel. It really does mean a lot. The third one is, um, yes, I kind of like... Um, falling out of practice with making videos so um it's going to take me a while to gather momentum again um i have quite a few albums um lined up to for review i've got quite a few new uh pieces of vinyl um and hopefully that's going to excite you as well and um i will get back to the regular schedule as soon as possible um, yeah, I just need to gain traction again and, you know, get my life organized in a way that I can, you know, do these videos and it's going to be on, um, a more routine, uh, well, not more routine, but it's going to have a schedule which you guys have been used to and I was used to. It's just that Christmas got in the way and, um, yes, I'm very much eager to get back to normal service. So bear with me. Um, there shouldn't be any gaps from this point onwards, but, um, if there's a couple of days, um, if videos are a couple of days late, do forgive me. It's just me building up momentum again and, you know, sorting out the whole work life balance thing. So yeah, um, I will not fail you. <laughs> so yeah, again, thank you for sticking around. It's been greatly appreciated. So today, um, we're going to be talking about some of the uh, at least three jazz albums from my vaults and um, I'm going to go over each one in turn and give you an idea of why I would recommend each album to you. So first out of the gate is a 1976 release. Um, it's by a group called the Detroit Jazz Composers Limited and the album's entitled Hastings Street Jazz Experience. So, yeah, it's the Hastings Street Jazz Experience. And as you can see, I'm a bit tongue-tied because I'm, I'm really out of practice with this. So um, do forgive me. So here's the album cover itself. I do like that cover. Um, it's kind of got a vista where most people can resonate with that image. If you just simply look, well, particularly if you're a metropolitan person, um, if you just look up, um, that's pretty much the scene that you're going to see. Um, so yeah, it certainly did resonate with me. It's quite obvious that it wasn't, it's not an image from the UK, but nonetheless, um, yeah, I like it. it it's really nice. So, um, I should say, um, at the outset that, um, I bought this album a number of years ago and I've totally forgotten what it sounded like. Um, and yes, it's one of the great things about doing this YouTube channel is it allows me, it gives me an excuse to revisit albums that um, I know I want and I know I'd listen to it. Um, it's just a case of like, there's quite a few. So I do tend to forget what albums sound like. So 
it was really nice to pull this one off the shelf and give it a re-listen and boy what an experience it was um i really did enjoy it um i found this to be a thoroughly enjoyable piece uh, littered with interesting and honest compositions um there's no cover tunes on here yeah i'm quite certain of that they're all original compositions and i do love that um don't get me wrong there's quite a few um jazz compositions that i have multiple versions of by multiple artists but um i do like hearing new sounds as well and on this album there certainly are some gems on here to be found um so this the compositions as a whole um and the way that the actual album flows it seamlessly transitions between the spiritual the big band sound and uh, gospel elements as well and it all kind of like blends seamlessly from one to the other and it's a really nice touch um i can't wait for you guys to have a listen to it and it certainly resonated with me. I respect the output on this particular album. Now, there is an, it, there is an elephant in the room with this particular album. And I would say it's not only just a feature of this album, but if you think about the subgenre of spiritual jazz, you will come across this quite often. And that simply is budgetary constraints. Now, when you're thinking about jazz and you're thinking about Miles Davis, John Coltrane, that level of artist, a, a, quite a bit of money was thrown at each one of those albums and the production values are really high. Now, that's why it kind of sounds as good as it does. Now, with albums from the spiritual jazz subgenre, they've got, you know, the, the, the budgets are poultry um you kind of have to make do rather than being able to hire in the best talent to make your album sound as as good as it can do we, this is a really good example of something which was done at the community level and i'm sure most of the artists volunteered their services just to make this album happen and boy do i appreciate their efforts um it's just fantastic so well done to everyone involved you really did a good job um but yes that kind of because it's low budget um the actual sound reproduction is grainier um than you might expect so for some people that's a deal breaker but for me um i really do appreciate it and that kind of raw, authentic sound is precisely what I want from this subgenre. And I think that's just where the charm and the, the yeah, is is a charm. Um, um, and the mystique. Um, and that's, yeah, that's really what makes me interested in the, the subgenre. Because it, it does sound different. It is a more honest approach. Uh, approach to making jazz so again for all those concerned in making this album well done to you the tracks that i would recommend from this album would be uh, a little love for you yes lord which is yeah that's that's a stomp of that tune and jamil the notables on this album are phil ranilin hopefully i've pronounced his name correctly and he's on trombone and yeah he's done a really nice job um i would say also um as a follow-up um what's partially well what's unique with this particular production is that um there are at least 12 singers on this particular uh, album um and sometimes they sing well they sing singularly or they do it as a as a giant chorus kind of thing um Either way, done really well, no complaints, really enjoyed it. But also the actual uh, musician, there's like another 30 of them. So you, can you imagine the stage in which they must have played live must have been huge to get that many people up there at any given time. So um, yeah, well done. Um, 
if you haven't heard the album i would suggest give it a real good listen see if it's to your taste if it is you will find this for reasonable money out there it's still available um most people just overlook it so you should be able to get hold of it quite easily if you do like it so that's the first album the second album today is a 1973 release and it's by Sun Ra and the album's entitled Discipline 27 2. There you go. Again, I like that cover. This is one of those covers for me which um, look better from a distance than close up. And um, that's not to throw any shade on the artist. And the artist's name is actually Leroy Butler. So well done to you, sir. Um, yeah, your artwork got on a Sun Ra cover. <laughs> so, yeah, good for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't got a claim to fame like that. So, um, Mr. Butler, well done. You made an interesting cover art here, and I certainly do appreciate it. Um, in regards to this album, um, I would say Sun Ra is kind of... I like him. I like Sun Ra and the orchestra. I like what they stand for. Um, and this album, along with, in my opinion, an album called Languidity, are the two most accessible Sun Ra albums. Um, all the rest kind of go off in directions where I, I can't necessarily follow them. Um, but yes, um, well, in my notes, which I'm going to read from, although I greatly admire Sun Ra's creativity, I don't necessarily enjoy his and the orchestra's execution. Oh, that's a bit fierce from me. That doesn't sound like me. I'm usually more generous than that. Um, and I've said um, I would advise listening to this album in reverse order. Uh, Discipline 27-2 is one hell of a composition yeah i'm right there um it's it's probably about a 15 minute track uh discipline 27 2 um outstanding it really is a tour de force it if you've never heard it give it a listen um if it doesn't send shivers down your spine then i really don't know what to say to you um yes um and i yeah uh, the other tracks on here, I wouldn't say they're fillers, but what I would say is, yeah, the Discipline track is really where it's at. If you want a real glimpse of what Sun Ra is capable of, that would be the track to start off with. Um, and if you like that, continue with listening to the rest of the album. If you didn't find the experience pleasant, then perhaps that's where you should jump off and just say, well, no, this album's not for me. It certainly is for me, though. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, listen to this, what I've written about this particular album, um, in, particularly in regards to Discipline 27. It poses the idea of others or gods looking down on humanity and they discuss amongst themselves the plight and possible salvation of mankind. Ooh, listen to me. Um, in order to guide mankind on the path towards greater understanding, the others freely choose mortality or mortal existence, mortal existence to better convey to humanity all of what is. Ooh, I can't believe I wrote that. It's supposed to be a note, but it's like more like an essay. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I still stand by that. Um, there's a lot to be found on here. Um, and if you're familiar with Sun Ra, he has a particular philosophy on life and his, you know, of life, the universe and everything in between kind of thing. So, yeah, this is a really good journey for that. Um, I found this album to be uh, beautifully optimistic um but well i did a caveat here i'm not sure whether we deserve or have earned uh the sentiments uh extolled on this particular album yeah i leave it to you to decide that but yeah it's a it's a high concept piece executed with skill um 
yeah, like I said, there's some Ra's kind of like, um, he's a bit dive, um, it's, it's not, what, what, how would I best describe it? Um, I would say something, he's, he's quite di divisive in the sense of, yeah, when he goes off on a tangent, it's too much for some people, even me, I can't follow it, it's just too much. But if you do like his output, then yeah, this is, yeah, this, or you've never heard it before, this is a really good gateway to really understand what Sun Ra and the orchestra is about. So give it a listen. The tracks that I would recommend listening to would be Discipline 27.2, of course, um, and a track called Neptune. The notables on this album are the Space Ethnic Voices. So that's the female vocalist. There's about six or seven of them. Um, John Gilmore on saxophone, Kwame Hadi on trumpet, and Odun on conga, all of which do a lovely job on this particular album. So well done to you. Um, yeah, please check it out if you've never heard Sun Ra before. Um, you're in for a trip so yeah strap yourselves in so that's today's second album the final album today oh, yeah, i'm so happy to show this to you is a 1961 release and it's by a gentleman uh well it's by the paul horn quintet and the album's entitled the sound of paul horn there you go um I like aspects of this cover. Um, I don't like all of it. Um, I think it would have been better without an image of Mr. Horn there. And that's no disrespect to him. He's not like he's ghastly, you know, he's, he's horrible to look at or anything like that. I just think the, the typeface and the color scheme was working for me. I don't think you necessarily needed the image of him in the middle to convey how good this album is. Maybe you do. Um, but in my opinion, I could have done without it. Um, so, um, just reading from my notes here, do forgive me. So, um, my notes go as follows, um, how I enjoyed this album, a lovely display of Horn's versatility, and I underlined it three times, um, I like this album, I really do. Um, this is a good example of scalability. I don't even think that's an actual word, but um, here's what I think I meant by that particular note. Now, regardless of whether you have a budget system or you have a high-end one, um, this album sounds beautiful on all of those. So, yeah, not a lot of albums can do that. So not only is it is a great body of work, but irrespective of what kind of system you have, it's pretty much going to sound lovely on it. So, yeah, think of that when you're considering this album. It will sound good. I can, yeah, pretty much guarantee it. Um... This is a high level instance of what jazz can be, um, a master class of composition and performance. Yeah, again, I, I can't dispute that. Um, not that you should have internal arguments with yourself, but <laughs> sometimes I do change my mind from when I write my notes to thinking about it a couple of days after. But yes, I would stick with that. This is a glorious album. Uh, there are seamless transitions between West Coast and hard bop jazz um, and there's real beauty to be found. Um, for me at least, this album is up there with the very best. Um, I'm not going to take that back. I This is a benchmark album. So if you like jazz and you don't already have it in your collection, I would strongly advise having a listen, see what you think, um, and you'll probably find that you're going to be making an order for it sooner rather than later. Now, the tracks that I would recommend from this album would be uh, Benny's Buns, Mirage for Miles, which is a, probably about a 12-minute tune, but it's absolutely gorgeous, and My Funny Valentine. Again, really nice track, that. 
the notables on this album are Emil Richards on vibes, uh, Paul Moer on piano, Jimmy Bond on bass, and Milt Turner on drums. Um, I salute you, gentlemen. You really put out some fantastic work here. So, um, yeah. I can't recommend this album enough. You can still get it. It's relatively, in the scheme of things, a, as cheap as chips. So, yeah, I'd say just have a listen first, as I would say with all albums that I may present to you. Have a listen, see if it's to your taste. But if you do like it, snap it up. It's it's one of the cheaper albums out there. And don't necessarily think that cheap means lower quality. That doesn't apply here. It really doesn't. So have a look out for it. So that's the final album today. Um, as I said, slightly out of practice. My flow will come back um, sooner rather than later, I hope. Um, again, I would like to thank you for joining me for this episode. Um, hopefully you found it mildly entertaining as I trip over myself. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure. So, um, yeah, if you've... If you mildly enjoyed the episode, uh, please consider liking, subscri subscribing and sharing. Um, your comments are welcome down below. Um, uh, so until the next episode, um, please look after yourselves. Uh, stay safe and I will see you for the next episode shortly. So until then, bye bye. Take care.